Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And guys, we got a lot to look at today. So I'm gonna show you some cool stuff. Another, another cool stuff video. Plus we got a great clutch on the ground. I'm so excited for this female laid. We'll take a look and see how many eggs we got from her. And you never know what else might uh, show up today. So let's take a look and see what we got here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. All right, guys. I know it's very late in the season, but yes, we have another ball python that has laid a clutch. And I think pa Pablo actually has palpated correctly this time. We're going to find out. What was your what was your palpation? Five. You said there were five good eggs in there. That's yeah. what you said. All right. That's so this is a GHI Mojave, which you know is, you guys watch my videos. That's like one of my favorite combinations. Het Pied. This female I bought a couple years ago, and I've been, I've been waiting for her to breed. I thought she might have gone last year. She didn't go. I bred her to a black pastel pied. So potentially we can produce GHI Mojave black pastel pieds. And we talked about this before. Will they be high white? Hopefully not. Hopefully we can get some um, some more color in them. But let's see, right? We're not gonna find out what we got. We're gonna see how many eggs we got here. And this girl's beautiful. Let's take a look at her. Oof, that's nice. That's a nice female. She's very light um, for a um, GHI Mojave. Most of my GHI Mojave is a little, a little darker than that. I was always wondering if maybe there was another gene in there, but she could just be kind of stretched out a little bit from giving birth. We're gonna like, let's let's see if we take a peek here at these eggs. Oh, she's not happy. You said how many, Pablo? Five. You guessed wrong. She is hollow. There's not another egg in there. So oh. we got four eggs. This one's a little small, but it looks like it should be a good one. And uh, mama did good, first clutch. Hey, four, I'll take four good eggs any day of the week because a lot of times I get 10 bad eggs. So good job, little girl. We're gonna wash you off. We're gonna put you back in your tub, get you fed, and uh, we're gonna see how these eggs did. Good clutch. All right, I took this little girl outside just to, after we washed her off, give her a little sunlight here. here. You can see she's really stretched out from just giving birth, but she's she's got a lot more white on her than any GHI Mojave that I've produced. I really. I've never seen this many, this uh, this light of a GHI Mojave. Um, a lot of whiting, white in here. I, I'm just wondering if there's anything else in this in this female. I mean, I have some really dark ones usually, but we'll see. You know, look, she's she's very light on her belly, so could just be a variation. You know, not all GHI Mojaves look the same. She's got a really nice defined striping on top. Could there be another gene possibly, but it just could be variability as well. All right, let's put her away. All right, four good eggs, one big, big egg. I wonder if this one's got twins in it. That would be kind of cool. Then Pablo technically would be correct. It would be five babies, but he said five eggs, but so anyway, we'll see. They all look like they have some veins and, and embryos in there, so that's good. We're gonna put these in the incubator, and in 60 days, that's gonna be in December, we're gonna have some baby, uh, some more baby snakes. Looks like we're going all year round now with the uh, hatching. Uh, usually, I used to have seasons, now it seems like it's just nonstop. So, although it, it's you know, obviously quite a few less than normal. I mean, we have a, I get most of my eggs, you know, around May, June, July, and then it kind of tapers off a little bit. So. All right, good clutch. There's a beautiful eclipse, which is a leopard, motley, head albino, Boa, this male is is ready to breed probably, and he is available. Not on Morph Market. If you guys are interested, hit me up. If you want to get into that Eclipse project, which is once again the, the recessive leopard with the motley gene added, it takes away all the pattern, makes a black chocolate black snake. This is head albino, head call albino. You create an albino version of this, you got the Eclipse. Love those eclipses. Let's take a look at my eclipse. All right, this is the sun eclipse or albino eclipse. That's a leopard, motley, albino. A little dirty, definitely gonna be going at the shed. You can see she's patternless, like the eclipse I just showed you, except she's albino, so no, no black pigmentation. They look very much like a, an albino sterling, really. And, uh, but they have that classic leopard head, the Boa Sigma head, so it doesn't, that, that's what really differentiates them. They'll stay way smaller. Even though there's albino in there, they'll stay way small. Sterlings in my estimate, all my sterlings are really big. They're, they're big snakes. Um, I love this girl, or this boy I should say, and he'll go into the breeding rotation possibly this year. 
All right, here's a really cool bow I thought I'd show you uh, that I picked up this year. This is a hypo leopard, which as you can see here, when you put the hypo gene with leopard, leopard, which is a really dark morph, you get so much red because underneath the darkness of the leopard is, is a lot of red. This is also Mandarin belly. Look at that red belly. One copy, Mandarin belly is an incomplete dominant um, morph that I just, this is the first, um, I guess you could say representative that I've gotten of that Mandarin belly. Uh, Super Mandarin belly is great. I've seen Super Mandarin belly leopards that are just, you would swear that there was blood gene in them. That's how red they are. And this is head albino as well. So a lot of potential here. I've seen in Europe, they produce uh, Mandarin belly leopard hypo albinos and they're gorgeous. They're the, more, some of the nice, nicest looking albinos I've ever seen. So future project, you know, really nice and uh, we'll grow her up and at some point we'll get the breeder. Just like to show you guys some of the cool pickups that I get. I'm still excited about picking stuff up too. I don't just produce stuff, I still spend way too much money, like we all do. Little update on my Scoria Fire girl, who is growing nicely. Look at her, she's all pinked out. That fire gene and that scoria work so well together. Oof, is that really a nice looking snake? Look, she's so light. There's no hypo gene in there either. You would swear that this is a hypo gene in there, but now it's that fire gene lightening everything up. And she's got like really, I, I, she doesn't let me take a look, but she's got really nice blue eyes too. Really, really nice blue eyes. Great combination. Really happy I picked this up. I've shown you guys, I've shown you this girl before, but she's definitely putting some good size on now. All right, last snake for today. Really putting some nice size on. This is my labyrinth head sharp albino. Yep, gorgeous girl. I always, I always go the, I always go the girl route with. I don't know why with labyrinths. I always, I don't know why. I don't have a lot of males. I, I gotta, I gotta start holding back more males. This girl is is phenomenal. Look at that blue eye. That is exquisite. She's also 50% head annery, but really a, a very, very cool representation of, of the labyrinth gene if you really want to see what labyrinth really looks like at its best. The chain, it's chain linked together, and she's just really good grade eater. She's put on a nice size, and eventually uh, I hope to produce some <laughs> albino labyrinths with her. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I looked at some really cool boas. We got that amazing GHI Mojave head pie clutch. Hopefully we get some GHI Mojave black pastel pie. You never know. That's going to be great if we get some of that stuff. I love GHI Mojave. I mean, I can't, I can't get enough of it. I, I want it in everything, really. You know, that combination just... Is, it's, you know, as much as I love white snakes, I, I love dark snakes too. And it's like the, the two opposite ends of the spectrum, so to speak. And so those were really exciting. And, you know, we got a lot of other cool stuff going on here and uh, you never know what's gonna hatch out, what's gonna breed. I got some bread leaf eggs in the uh, incubator. A lot of them went bad, but I think we have like four left. Fingers crossed, hopefully those will hatch. Those are supposed to hatch any day. We have a clutch that's kind of like, look like they're gonna pip in the, in the incubator as well. So we don't have a lot left, but we still have some stuff left that's hatching. And I, and I have so much stuff that from 2021 that's just really coming into its own now that it's been eating. We're gonna be showing you that over the next couple of days. And I'm gonna do a video. I don't know if it's gonna be tomorrow, the next day, or maybe next week, I haven't decided. I wanted to go over the history of the albino boa constrictor. So I wanna give you a little bit of that history of where that came from. and how that got into our industry because you know what the albino morph really changed boa breeding and made it super popular so stay tuned for that if you like what you're seeing make sure you show some love hit that subscribe button turn on those notifications hit that like button i'll see you back tomorrow morning